What's going on, Charlotte Steppers? It's Miss Ward coming to you. I swear this got to be the 25th time I try to make this video, but we're going to work through it. All right, so the topic today is going to be about paying yourself. And you got to realize if you're running a business and you're not paying yourself, especially if you have a family, you are stealing from your family. Usually when you sacrifice and pay everybody else and don't take care of your family, you have a problem. You have a problem with how you write your tickets. You don't have enough profit in the ticket. So I was listening to one of my favorite YouTubers, the guy from uh, Contractor Fight. And I was listening to him and he was talking about that very subject. And he's absolutely right. In structuring a business, you can't sell your way to a profit. You gotta take the sales you have now, dissect them and make sure they are profitable. And you need to be able to pay yourself. If that means you gotta go do the jobs yourself, you go do the jobs yourself till you can afford to do something different. But until then, you shouldn't be expanding, you shouldn't be doing anything other than focusing on the basics. Learn the appliances. Learn how to troubleshoot and diagnose properly. Slow down. Stop trying to take every job. Take the jobs that you are familiar with the appliances and work on those till you perfect them. Once you get that down, then add to the repertoire if necessary. But the way appliance repair is, you can focus on, as I was discussing with another one of my mentees, dryers and ice makers. You know what I mean? Like, what people don't understand is, depending on your market, there's a demand. You just have to be able to take care of that demand better than anybody else. Florida market. People pay an arm and a leg for an ice maker because they swear it's just like AC. If they don't have ice in Florida, they're going to die. It's just too hot. I got to be able to have ice. I got to have the convenience of pushing the button and my ice maker working. And nine times, I mean, it's the quickest repair you can do. But understand that process. Understand what temperature the refrigerator has to be for the ice maker to initiate. From the sensor, which is internal, initiate the call for, for water. Like, come on, y'all. At the end of the day, y'all need to understand these processes. If they don't get crushed ice and they only can get cubed ice, understand how the solenoid works. Understand how the auger motor works. Understand, when you understand those minor processes, and then on top of that, open up the text sheet and learn how to understand the schematic. What feeds what? What comes from where? Where does the power come from? Where's the neutral? You know, where's the gr ground? I mean, at the end of the day, if you get it, the basics, same thing with the dryers. If you understand how to wire a dryer motor, like it's not complicated, but you have to be disciplined. You should be at the point now that you should be able to go to a, a customer's home with a refrigerator and put it in diagnostic mode, no matter it, what refrigerator it is, if it has a board, and if it, it has the ability to go in diagnostics. You gotta understand this. You need to understand what the low voltage board is and what the high voltage board, board is. You need to understand how these things work. Once you understand, when you see a GE product, you should know automatically that they are notorious for the evaporator fan shortening out the board, causing a load, causing the refrigerator to shut down. You should know this. If you don't know this, then you need to rethink your education process. You need to figure out how am I gonna learn X, Y, and Z. Prime example. I just left a customer house and I'm the first person. I hate washers and I hate dishwashers because I can't stand getting wet. Hey, I'm in appliance repair. Hey, hey, hate me. It'll be okay. But the reality is I was able to diagnose it by putting it in diagnostic mode, number one. Seeing that there was a water flow issue, number two. The customer's complaint was it would stop midstream. That it, the uh, appliance would stop front load Maytag, that it would stop in the middle of a wash and that the uh, softener um, would still be full. Well, guess what? If you understand the theory of washers, you know that if the if it can't go to the rinse cycle and it can't complete, it can't get past the rinse cycle because the cold valve the valve is not activated to complete that circuit, basically, so it shuts it down because the cold valve did not disperse water. 
And this is what I'm talking about. All clothes that I'm, all washes that I'm aware of, when the rinse cycle is controlled by the cold valve. And the same thing with the dispensing of the, uh, the fabric softener. You know, when it's in a front loaded washer. So that right there. So then the ne next thing I did, I manually went through the test and activated that valve. I showed the customer how the cold water did not dispense water and how the hot water, when I put it on hot, it would, that the hot water would dispense. So there we go. Now, we also are very clear that it could be an issue with the board and that's why we have to pull the schematics. But just knowing the basics, you're comfortable, you deal with the clients, and I hate this, I hate washers, but I understand them and it was one of my regular customers, so I had to go do it. But at the end of the day, I understand what I'm doing and I can price accordingly and I can schedule the job and do things the way I need to do it. But that came from me not knowing how to diagnose it. That came from me making mistakes in this diagnosing. So at the end of the day, you have to continue to grow. And so, like I was talking to one of my mentees, there's always one or two appliances that you still not sleeping at night because you couldn't fix it. You know, understand what your limits are Learn what you can learn and then learn it better than anybody else. It will help you in your ability to price the, the repair. Now let's get to the pricing of repairs. I don't understand why y'all don't know how to price for profit. You have to understand anytime you have an overhead expense, an overhead expense is anything that you have to pay for whether you sell a repair or not. You gotta pay for gas. If those of y'all that have office space, a virtual office, you got to pay for that. You got to pay for, you know, like I said, gas. You got to, the time you spend studying and prepping, that's all an expense. I mean, you got to pay for the license to be able to enter certain places or work for certain warranty companies. At the end of the day, y'all have to realize you got what we like to call a daily nut you have to hit. And that daily nut in my, in my former life, the expenses to run a particular location might have been $1,500, $2,000, $3,000, $4,000, dollars a day, depending on the location. If the location had a $20,000 lease, then a $21,000 lease, and it was 30 uh, days in a month, we had to divide that, and then we had knew that we had to hit that. Then we had to account for payroll at 28%. Like, come on. At the end of the day, run your business properly. And that's what I, why you have to charge. A lot of you guys just be coming up with prices off the top of your head. If you're not comfortable, invest in the Blue Book. And then be smart and invest in the online Blue Book so as they update it, you can uh, get what you need and take care of the customer because the more tools you have, the more professional you appear. But you can't be fumbling and get paid. If you give customer, if you're on time to the job, number one, you win the customer. I was 30 minutes early to the last job. And then when it was time for me to price, boy, I look at only in Palm Beach. Y'all see, y'all ain't, I'm gonna be nice. Look, I have no political affiliation. Let me get that, let me make that clear. But I just want y'all to see how we get down in Florida. Right here is a Trump rally right in front of me over this overhang and uh, on this underpass, uh, overpass. And they are here every, every day. It says impeach Biden. It says come and take it because that's a gun that was on that flag. Let me tell you something. This is why we in America. People can believe what the heck they want to believe and they have a right to express it. But getting back to the topic at hand, the reality is understand how to run your business and utilize all the tools at your disposal. Make sure that when you're making moves that they are tax moves. Oh, you don't understand taxes? Well, you see YouTube University, you got plenty of tax uh, people on the, on the channels that give you lots of small business information. And uh, Mike has talked about it. Erica Williams talked about it. There's a book called The 475 Deductions. That's an old book. You need to get the new one for 2021 and 2020. Because at the end of the day, you are losing money because you are not putting receipts aside. And do you have to keep up with all your paper receipts? No. With modern technology, you got apps that you can take a picture of the receipt. And then I always tell you guys, use QuickBooks. If you're paranoid that the government is watching your receipts and watching your money going through QuickBooks, then get the desktop version. 
At the end of the day, there's no excuse for you not to invest in running your business. You're going to spend the money anyway. Spend it on the business and make sure that it works so that the business works properly. You know, at the end of the day, you're going to have to be real business people, men and women. Y'all going to have to step up because you can't be out here playing business because you will be bankrupt and broke. And, and you won't be able to come back from it. Trust me, I know. But anyway, at the end of the day, focus. That's all I got for y'all today. I'm 10 minutes and 30 seconds in. And I think I done hit every corner of the earth. So y'all be blessed. I got to get prepped for my next consultation. If you like a consultation, it's in the description. And thank you for your support. Like, share, subscribe. Be blessed.